I love that movie. Boy, that restaurant, I love it. It's my favorite. I love that dress. You know, sometimes we say love. We love this and we love that. But you know, when you have felt love, when you have sensed love, it can be a transforming emotion. Love can take you to a place that you never dreamed of. It can give you a confidence that can cause you to soar. Love is powerful. And you know who loves you today? God loves you. You know, a lot of people, they've, you know, kind of gotten the impression of God and how He loves, maybe by the way they were raised. Maybe by the way they were treated by their family. You know, some people didn't have a father in their life. Their father was absent. So they weren't able to really understand what it was like to be loved. You know, I feel so fortunate because I had a wonderful family that I was raised in. My mother and I, my father, they loved me, they supported me. But you know, it's interesting because love is a, is a funny thing. It, 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 you can be given love, but if you don't accept that love, it doesn't mean the same. And I had to find that when I was growing up, I had to learn to accept that love because my ways weren't always the right ways. In fact, I can remember when I was 16 years old and just learning how to drive. My father was in the kitchen one Saturday afternoon and he was going to put some grill some hamburgers. And he said, Victoria, we need a few things. Can you run to the store and pick them up? And I thought, oh boy, yeah, I want to drive the car. He said, okay, now I'm going to give you the keys. He said, but I want you to go straight to the grocery store and straight back. He said, and oh yeah, the passenger side window is off the track, so I don't want you to roll it down. I said, okay, Dad, got it. Had Louie and my kids and headed out the door. But just like any 16-year-old, I went straight down the street to my best girlfriend's house <laughs> <laughs> to take her to the grocery store with me. As we were on our way to the grocery store, some of our friends were walking down the sidewalk. And I was so excited to be driving the car. I said, hey, we're going to pull over, roll down the window, and we'll wait on them, and they can see us driving. And so she looked at me kind of strange, and she said, I thought you said that the window was broken. I said, oh, don't worry, it'll be okay. Just do it slowly. <laughs> so we pulled over, and we're waving, just acting like we're just so grown up. And so as we finished, we, I began to drive off, and she began to roll up the window, and it was as if the world stopped. For just a moment, that window shattered in a million pieces. I looked at that window and I could not believe my eyes. I looked at my friend and I said, you're going home with me. I'll never forget walking up the driveway thinking, how am I going to tell my father what has just happened? I walked in the back door and headed towards the kitchen and there he stood. Looked at me kind of strange because I was empty handed. And I said, Dad, I've got to tell you something. I've got to tell you what happened. And I began to tell him just the whole story. I began to tell him the truth. And I said, Dad, will you forgive me? An amazing thing happened that day. Yeah, he was disappointed. But he showed me his unconditional love. He showed me that even though I made a mistake, even though I was disobedient, it didn't change his love for me. He still loved me. You know, some of you in this audience would say, wow, if that happened to me, <laughs> that would be it. I would have been in so much trouble, I would have never heard the end of it. But I'm going to tell you something. God loves you unconditionally tonight. No matter what mistakes you've ever made, no matter what bad choices that you have ever, uh, that have ever, you've ever chosen, God's love for you never changes. In fact, your past mistakes do not di dictate your future. Mm. Do you know when I went to go to my father again and say, Dad, can I have the keys? I want to go somewhere. He didn't say, well, I don't trust you. You know, you know what happened last time. He didn't hold it over my head. And so many times when we make a mistake, we don't want to go to God. We feel like well, we're ashamed. You know, we just know that He is counting our mistakes against us. I want to say this today. God is not looking at your mistakes. He's looking at your milestones. You've got to believe with all of your heart that He is watching you grow and He's watching you mature. And that those mistakes don't change His love for you. He 
said, I gave you my very best mm. so that I could have a relationship with you. And like I said earlier, sometimes our, our view of love can be distorted because of the way someone treats us. You know, I have a wonderful man who treats me very well and he tells me he loves me, he does things for me. But you know, I have a part to play in that. I have to meditate on this time. When he tells me, Victoria, I love you, I don't just let it go in one ear and out the other. I have to build a foundation of love. Because not every day is a perfect day. Listen, I don't get it right every day. None of us do. But when I do something that I, I don't think he's going to be real happy about, I don't react to his love. I don't think, oh, he's taking it from me. See, I've built this foundation on the inside of me so I know that I can respond to him. And see, today you may not have really ever thought about how much God loves you. Mm. And I can tell you that you can turn that around in your life. But you've got to begin to do your part. You've got to begin to meditate. You've got to begin to hear yourself say, God loves me. He said he'd never leave me or forsake me. God gave me his very best, his only begotten son. He would have done it if it would have been just me on this earth. You've got to begin to open the book that he has written you, the love letter. And you've got to begin to draw from that love every single day. Because let me tell you something. Every day is not a perfect day. Every day, we may not feel perfect. We may feel like we've made some mistakes. We may not have gotten it right. It does not change God's love for you. And I want to tell you something. When you can go back to that foundation, and you can say, God, your mercies are fresh and new every day, and I'm going to walk in that mercy, something happens. When you begin to say, God, I believe that you love me. See, the scripture says that love transforms. But you know, if we hang on to baggage from the past, mm. if we think about our mistakes all the time and how we, we can't seem to possibly get it right, that will conform us to that way. That will just conform us to the past. But when we begin to break free, and we begin to realize that, hey, I, God loves me just the way I am. He loves me just the way I am. Then you begin to rise up. You begin to find a new strength, a new courage, a new commitment. Don't run from God anymore because His arms are open wide. And He's saying, run to me. Just like He told Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, I want you to know this. There's a lot of things I want you to do. Some days you're not going to feel like you can do them. So I'm going to tell you this in advance. I knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. I want you to know that I love you and I've already put my stamp of approval on you. And do you know God is saying the same thing to you? I've already stamped you approved. Mm -hmm. Approved by Almighty God. So don't shrink back. Don't let the enemy tell you that you've done too much. Because I can tell you this right now. Doubt and unbelief will always follow us around. It will always try to get our attention. It will always try to distract us. But if we have a foundation of life, we are more powerful than any doubt, than any unbelief, than any challenge that would try to come our way. Because the creator of the universe loves us and has already stamped his approval on us. My parents founded Lakewood Church on Mother's Day in 1959. Of course, a couple of years ago, on Mother's Day 2009, Lakewood celebrated our 50th anniversary. And I was thinking about how in the Old Testament, every 50th year was extremely significant. It was called the year of Jubilee. What made it so significant is in this year of Jubilee, all the debts were canceled, all the slaves were set free, all the servants were we would call them employees today. They were released to go back home to be reunited with their families. Not only that, all the property was returned back to the original owners. For instance, you may have sold some property to someone. They paid you month after month. They even paid it off. Didn't matter. In this year of Jubilee, 
everything that had your name on it or your family's name would once again be yours. It was a year that everyone looked forward to. A year of great freedom. Freedom from debt, freedom from struggle, freedom from bondage. You could be working night and day trying to make ends meet. You knew if you could just make it to Jubilee, everything would be okay. But as great as Jubilee was, the prophet Isaiah declared that something was coming that was even greater. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to announce the year of God's favor. One translation says, a day when the free favors of God profusely abound." Isaiah was saying, there is a day coming. It's not here just yet. But there will be a time when God's people don't have to wait 50 years for Jubilee, but they can live in Jubilee. Amen. Many years later, Jesus quoted this same passage. But He didn't say like Isaiah, I'm here to announce that Jubilee was coming. He said, I'm here to declare that Jubilee has arrived. Amen. Because of what Jesus has done, you and I are going to have to wait 20 years to be free. We don't have to wait 10 years to be blessed. Five years to see God's favor. No, friends, this is your year of jubilee. Just like Lakewood is celebrating 50 years of ministry, God is saying this is your year to be released from every bondage. This is your year to be released from depression, to be released from fear, to be released from addiction, to be released from lack, to be released from worry, anything that's holding you back. Not only that, this is the year God wants to return everything that has your name on it. Yeah. The business, the property, the health, the ideas, the children, the freedom. This is our year to see the free favors of God profusely abound. It's interesting, the way they announced Jubilee back in those days was by blowing the ram's horn. In fact, Jubilee means the loud blasting of a, of a horn. What I read is they'd have a man stationed every mile or so throughout the land on the, on the main road. And when Jubilee came, they'd have a ram's horn. The first man would blow the ram's horn. Everyone in his town, in his village, they would sing, shout, rejoice. A mile down the road, that man would hear it. He would blow the ram's horn. That's how it would travel throughout the land. Every village, every town, there would be singing and shouting, we're free to go back home. Our deaths are canceled. It was a time of great celebration. But I can imagine some people, when they heard all the singing, all the shouting, they thought, what's all this excitement about? Nothing special about today. It's just another ordinary day. Because they didn't understand the significance of Jubilee, they missed their opportunity to see the free favors of God profusely abound. Don't let that be you. It's easy to think, oh, this is just Joel getting everybody's hopes up. He does this everywhere he goes. This is just the people of Hawaii. We're all always excited. But this is not just a celebration tonight. This is God announcing your year of Jubilee. This is your year to see Ephesians 3.20. Exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. Our attitude should be, by faith, I can hear the ram's horn. I can hear those trumpets blowing in the distance. I'm not going to sit back and think, oh, this is not for me. I never get any good breaks. No, I know that sound is announcing freedom. It's announcing jubilee. So everything that has my name on it is coming in. That help I've been praying for, it's coming in. That vindication I've been waiting for, it's coming in. That healing, that, that victory is coming my way. This is your year of jubilee. I want to declare over each one of you. God is releasing you from sickness into health. He's releasing you from death into abundance. He's releasing you from fear into peace. He's releasing you from addictions into freedom. Everything that has your name on it is coming in. The ideas, the contracts, the sales, the health, the children, the relationships, Whatever has your name on it, you need to get ready. This is your year of Jubilee. Let me ask you a 